Hi, I'm Steve. I'm a service manager here at Clark's Landing Marina. And today we're going to perform a walkthrough new boat orientation on a Cutwater 24 Coupe. We're going to go over some of the service points on the Yamaha 250 horsepower 4.2 liter outboard. We're going to identify the dipstick, the oil filter location, and water separating fuel filter. So your dipstick is identified with the yellow tag, the dipstick, you remove it, check your levels, wipe the dipstick off, and then replace the dipstick. You want to make sure that the motor is level when you're doing this. The oil filter is a spin-on filter, uses a cup-type filter wrench, remove the filter, and replace it with a new element. In the front of the motor here, there is a water separating fuel filter cartridge. This cover needs to be removed. Wire at the bottom of the cup filter is for your high water alarm, which would display on your gauge up at the helm. That gets disconnected. This cup is unthreaded. The element is replaced and then reassembled. And all of these things are outlined in the owner's manual. There's also a separate folder for a maintenance matters by Yamaha. So on the side of the cowl, you notice there's a rocker switch. This is your manual tilt operation. There's no need for you to go up to the helm and turn the key on and trim the motor up and down from the helm. You can do it right here. Uh, and let me demonstrate that. Okay, up and down. The ignition key does not need to be on. Your battery switches do need to be on to operate that. Below that, you'll find is this. This is your fresh water flush attachment. You'll simply unscrew this. You'll connect your garden hose right to this. Turn on your garden hose, and the water, fresh water from your, your garden hose, will fill through the power head and out the exhaust. And again, we like to try to do this in a vertical position if possible. The motor can be tilted. It's not going to be detrimental to the motor, but we like to see it in a vertical position. All right, moving farther down to the midsection of the unit, we're going to talk about the sacrificial anodes. These motors have sacrificial anodes both internally and externally. You have sacrificial anodes. You'll have one anode here on the bottom of the transom assembly, and you have another anode here on the bottom of the ventilation plate. These need to be changed periodically. While we have the motor in this up position, we'll talk about the power trim and tilt assembly. The power trim and tilt assembly has a fill plug here. This is done prior to the boat going into the water. It's one of the pre-season checks that you always want to go through. Also a good idea to check this in the wintertime when the boat comes out to make sure that the oil is clean. I just want to mention real quick, is the propeller. This is a Yamaha Saltwater Series 2 three-blade stainless steel propeller. Over here, you have your outboard motor model and serial number. It's always a good idea to keep this handy. You go to your local Yamaha dealer and you want to get replacement parts, oil filters, oil filter kits, fuel filters, spark plugs, whatever you'd like. Uh, always take your model and serial number with you that ensures that you get the accurate replacement parts for your particular motor. Okay, so this is your fuse location. It also identifies each fuse and what it does. Right here again, if you cannot for some reason get over to the side and get your model and serial number on the side of the motor, it's located right here. Build date is also there. And all this information is in the owner's manual, which is in the boat bag. Uh, but you always want to go through that and familiarize yourself with your, with your motor and the maintenance intervals. Additionally, we have sacrificial anodes on the trim tab assemblies, one on each side here and then on the other side. You'll see these anodes, and they would need to be replaced annually. On the starboard aft section of the boat, we have the fuel fill. And to get this cap open, you'll see there's a little black button right there. Push that, and you'll open it up, and then that's how you, you fill the vessel. Closing it, 
it's just a snap and then it's it's closed you might get a little bit of an air when you open up the cap that's the uh, system that's a normal thing um, it, because this is a closed system it does not vent to the open atmosphere this is a freshwater shower you just lift this up you'll see the nozzles in there it pulls out and then you just return it back in and close the lid. This is the Lumar Anchor Windless. Okay, and how you operate this is with these foot pedals. You have the up and you have the down. These flip up. And if you're up here, you can just use it, your thumb if you like. Or whatever is comfortable for you. You have the down. Okay. And at that point, just give the anchor a little bit of help. And it will deploy. As you can see, it will deploy on once you get it over that crest. And then to bring it up, bring it up just like that. We have a line on here that we use as a safety. That way the anchor, the anchor doesn't uh, deploy inadvertently while you're underway. It's just a little safety, some little safety line right on here. Right around here, tie that off just to keep things safe. Close these, and that's all there is to it. The one thing you want to remember when you're working with an anchor windlass is when you want to retrieve your anchor. Do not use the windlass to pull the boat forward to the anchor. That's not what a windlass is designed to do. The anchor windlass is designed to raise that anchor straight up from the bottom, the way you don't have to do it manually. You want to be able to just jog the boat, motor the boat up, Get that line slack, retrieve that line by using the buttons on the anchor windlass, and then once that anchor is vertical, that line is vertical, you can raise the anchor up from the bottom. But don't ever try to pull the boat forward. That's not what an anchor windlass is designed to do. Okay, so this is the power distribution panel. This has all your 110 dockside power, and it also has your 12 volt selector switches. You have your emergency parallel, which parallels all the batteries together in the event of the engine start batteries gets a little bit low. And then you have the engine battery switch. And again, just like the bow thruster, these are simple on off switches. So it's, it's off and it's on. Now, in a normal situation, you would run this with your house battery on and your engine battery on. Now your engine is going to start and your onboard functions are going to operate. If at any point either of the two batteries gets low for any reason, say you are spent a little bit too much time out there sunbathing and with the radio plate and the lights and stereo on, um, what you would do is you would turn on the emergency parallel. And what that does is that groups all the batteries together and now you have that extra voltage to start the motor up and motor on home. This is your AC. This is the power that's coming in from the dock. And you plug the boat in. And you have, much like in your house, these circuit breakers. You have the shore power circuit breaker. That's the main circuit breaker right there. Okay? And then down here you have all the different things. You have your outlets. You have your battery charger. Microwave oven. Your grill. And your hot water heater. These things are all operated by 110 AC volts. And it's just a matter of switching these on. An indicator light will indicate that the power is on and that the that different component is energized. Off kills the power. Just like a circuit breaker in your home. Same thing. The only difference right here, this boat's equipped with an inverter. So an inverter uses battery power and converts that power 12 volt DC to 110 volt AC so it's drawn off those batteries and it's converting it so you can run some of these functions while you're out at sea but you have to understand it's very important that you understand that you're drawing off of those 12 volt batteries now 12 volt batteries you have a limited source there so you have to be mindful of that okay you don't want to drain those batteries down and not have the ability to get home Again, this is where that emergency parallel comes in. 
if that happens to you, you hit that emergency parallel and you're able to get that motor started and get home. But these are things that you have to be aware of. And to operate that, you just slide this over. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you again. So when you're on shore power, that circuit breaker is on and you're drawing off. But when you're off and you're out at sea, that shore power goes off. This safety slider goes up and that inverter goes on. So now you're powering on inverter and the voltage will come up on these gauges. You'll see that power there. And then you flip on, well the battery charge is not going to work for you because you can't use that to make power on inverter. But you can use your grill, you can use your microwave, you can even use a hot water heater but these things do draw voltage so you want to be mindful that you don't uh, keep them energized for too long. Okay, that's how that works. Now, to turn on your inverter, you have a switch right here. It's a remote switch for the inverter. It's a simple on-off switch. Okay, now, here you have a ground fault interrupter. Sure, the on-off switch there. And you can test and reset with this. This is the ground fault interrupter. Okay. Now here is your air conditioning control module, okay, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It works much like your thermostat in your house, okay. You have hot and you have cool. You have the plus and minus buttons to raise and lower your temperatures. And you have these little indicator lights here that show you what mode the unit is in. So now, it's, once again, in the boat bag, there's all kinds of different user manuals and so on and so forth that are in this boat bag that help explain and you can different functions when it comes to the displays and making your own personal preferences on those displays and so on and so forth and we'll go over this a little later on for your potable water system or your fresh water system whatever you want to call it in other words your sinks there is a gauge here that shows you the water tank level because you need to fill the water tank and then you have a switch here which turns the pump on that powers the system the Kenyan grill the Kenyan grill this is an alcohol and electric stove there's a safety switch back here so when this is down it kills the power to this thing okay now to work on electric you simply turn this thermostat goes from 10 down to 1 red light will indicate that it's on and if you forget to shut this off when you close the lid that little switch back there will shut off the power to this electric element here okay you have warning signs because it will get hot until this element cools down now on the alcohol side you have the same thing. You have a thermostat. It has a zero which is off. And you turn it. And the farther you turn it, the larger the flame. And it's a pretty simple system because if you look right here, there's a cover. And as you open it, you'll see that it exposes this. You would have to light this with a like charcoal type lighter. And then that's how you would snuff it by closing this. Okay? To set this up for use as an alcohol stove you roll this element back lift out the splash plate you have a little filler knob here you remove this and you put the stove alcohol into the reservoir right here okay replace that cap Flash guard. Lower this element back down. That's going to support whatever pot or teapot or whatever the case may be that you're going to put there. Okay. You open this. You light it, and you have yourself an alcohol stove. And again, to shut it off, you close it. Okay. Lift this. Drop it down because this does lock goes up and locks you lift and drop it down this is the refrigerator refrigerator operates on 12 volts 
And right here you have a on-off thermostat control. And this is your freezer box right here. Okay, so this boat is equipped with a Lumar bow thruster to help you in docking situations. It's a joystick control, has an on-off switch right here, red indicator light showing it that the system is energized, and you'll just push it right or left, and that'll direct the bow right or left. Hit the button again, light goes off, it's the energize. This will time out after about 15 minutes or so. Uh, so if you use the joystick to help you get out of a slip or in a corner situation uh, and you're motoring, it will time out and a light will go off after a small period of time. Now the Lumar bow thruster has its own battery selector switch. That's located on the starboard side underneath this hatch. So. You'll lift this hatch. Okay, there's two batteries here. This is your hot water heater. And right down here, there's a battery selector switch. And it's a simple on off battery switch. So currently it's in the on position. You just reach down here, you turn it off, and that takes all the power away from the bow thruster. Back on and the bow thruster is ready to be energized back at the helm. What we'll do is we'll talk about motor function and controls. Okay, so first of all, you have a lanyard. This is a safety lanyard. You wanna make sure that that is clipped into place. All right, if you don't have that clipped in, the motor will crank over, but it will not start. It'll also give you an audio warning telling you that you have a problem and really all it is is you just need to clip the lanyard back in. Okay, so it's very simple. Just put your car key on and engine start. Okay, now you happen to notice it'll say right here, station one. You'll see that light is blue. Okay, let me start the motor up. This is the neutral position, so you hear it beeps. And I've just moved this control. So what I'm doing is this is a throttle only position. You hear the motor revving. We're not going anywhere. This is throttle only. Now if I bring it back, okay. I hit the button again, it beeps twice. Now we're in gear. Forward and reverse. And if we move it farther, then it'll throttle up and we're on our way. Okay. If there's ever a problem with this system, this is the blue lights that you see here will turn amber. And that's an indication that there's a problem with the shifting control system. Okay. You have your trim down and up right here. Or you can trim the motor while underway. Here you have your uh, Lenco trim tabs. And it's pretty simple. It's a bow down, and you'll hear them, and bow up. And what they do is, you can level the boat while underway. If you have, say, four people on one side of the boat, and you're on one side, and the boat's running down the river, and you got the wind blowing you sideways, the boat's got a little lean to it, whichever way you want that bow to go down, you would just hit that down. Now, these do have an auto retract feature, so you'll notice the sound when we shut the motors off, the Lenkos will go to an auto retract, which means they're gonna retract all the way back up to the new starting point the next time you start up the boat and get underway. This is the Yamaha digital display. This has all the motor systems on one display right here. It will show you your trim angle. As you can see, it's changing. Now the, it's flashing yellow, which means that it's gonna go into the tilt mode. We come out of tilt mode, and then farther down we go, you can see the bars are going down. It also gives you your fuel level. Gives you your engine temperature, your battery voltage, and your oil pressure. It has different functions. You go into the different displays. 
and you could change your look at fuel economy, uh, all different types of things for trips. If you're going to take a trip, um, and it hits a set, it goes right into menu, okay, and you go into maintenance, trip, okay, this will also give you under maintenance, it'll give you a reminder when it's time to have the engine serviced, a little maintenance icon will come up. And it gives you an idea because it tracks the engine hours, which are also displayed. Again, there's a, a manual on this. It's in the owner's manual. And we'll go through that uh, just to get you a little bit more familiar with that. With the anchor windlass. Now, this is the up and down control for the anchor windlass here at the helm. You've got the foot pedals up at the bow button right next to the windlass. And then here you have the up and down controls for the windlass here at the helm. So you could drop the anchor or you could raise the anchor from here. Okay. Okay, so this is the Garmin display. All right, it's a multifunction display. And on the right side, you have different selections. You have the combos, charts, sonar, radar, and these are all the different displays that will pop up. So right now, this is on combos. And you can see it goes to split. Uh, it'll go chart, sonar, split chart radar split and these are just touch so you could just touch them okay and they'll come up all right uh to get back you just hit menu all right or, or hit home i'm sorry and uh then you can go you can go to the charts or just radar hit that overlay and there you are you get back again you hit home and go back to combos and you can go with split nav or chart sonar and that's how that works and and there's all kinds of ways for you to custom tailor this put in your own waypoints and so on and so forth now as far as the switches are concerned uh, these are push on push off they push on they illuminate off means it's off and it's pretty much that you, you, you bills pumps macerator navigation lights anchor lights again your windless controls and then over on this side, you have your windshield wipers, both port and starboard, uh, lights and horn. These are breakers. If for some reason they short out or whatever, this is going to, it's called a pop breaker. It'll pop up. You just push it back down and it should re-energize. So this is the Horizon Standard VHF radio. Okay. The red button is an on-off button. You have the squelch button and you have a volume button. Okay, the display comes up right here, and you can toggle up with these arrows. You can also clear by hitting the clear. You can go straight to 16 by hitting the 16 uh, button here. You have a high-low range here. These radios have to be programmed, so once you take delivery of your boat, you're going to have to program the AIS system in this VHF radio. So that way, if there's ever an issue and a signal goes out, the Coast Guard will know who's sending that signal. They're going to have you and your boat information on there. So that's something that you're going to have to do. We can't do that at the dealership. The boat owner actually has to do that himself. Tucked underneath here, I'm going to remove this VHF mic for a second. And you'll see down here that there's another little switch. Now, this is your high water bilge pump and alarm. It has a toggle switch. And the toggle switch is in the down position. It is armed and ready to operate. In the center position, it's off. And if I flip it up, it's going to go into a test mode. Pretty loud, pretty annoying. So that is your high water bilge pump alarm and pump. Again, we flip it to the fully down position. The alarm is activated and the pump is energized so if we get high water in the bilge uh, the alarm will sound the bilge pump will come on okay so this is a jabsco saltwater head system now it has a manual pump which is the black t handle here and then it has a flush and rinse cycle which is this lever goes to the right and goes to the left and you pump it up and down like so and then you'll flip it over and flush and rinse that's how that works basic simple system now while we're in here 
we'll talk about fuses and fuse locations. This flips down and here you'll find the different fuses for all the different components and you'll find the main breaker for the Lumar which is a bow thruster breaker. Now in your owner's pack you'll have a diagram showing every fuse, what the amperage is, and what the fuse supports. Okay, so this is the Lumar Anchor Windless Breaker. And if you push that, that pops the breaker. The Lumar Windless no longer has any power to it. You flip that yellow flag back up, and that's how the flag breaker operates. If for any reason the, the Anchor Windless gets overloaded, it will pop this breaker, and the flag will be down. And it's just a matter of pushing that flag back up and now the uh, windows will be operational again. The TV has a swing out option. You notice it has a chain with a ring. You pull that down and the TV will swing out and you can manipulate that however you like. You can return it for motoring. It just clips right back in again. Okay, so forward hatches. So what we do is we slide this and we move it and we move it you want to make sure that's loose you can raise and lower the hatch tighten the screw here and then to lower it you just loosen that screw bring it back down tighten the hatch again and just lock over here we have the series 755 fusion stereo system Okay, so on off button here at the bottom left. Top left is your menu screen. And then you have your volume controls, mute buttons, lighting controls. Now, if you flip this over, you slide this out, you have your iPod dock here. Okay, so we talked about the bow thruster and the selector switches and the bow thruster batteries on this, under the hatch on the starboard side. So under this hatch on the port side, you'll find your battery charger, you'll find your inverter, and you'll also find circuit breakers for the inverter, and you'll also find a selector switch. So the inverter also has a battery switch that you turn on and off, and it's a simple on-off battery switch. And these are all located right down here. Now, the other thing that's down in this compartment, you'll notice that there's a pump right here. And that's your washdown pump that comes up and feeds these bait wells that we're going to talk about in a minute. And the valve for that is underneath this main hatch. We have the engine start batteries and we have the house batteries. And on top of the batteries you may notice there's a couple of circuit breakers there. These are for the battery charger. In the event the circuit gets overloaded, these little frag breakers will pop up and then it, you just simply push them back down again. Now, if the problem continues, the flag breaker will pop back up again. But that's what those are for. Okay. And again, on the bow thruster batteries, these are the bow thruster batteries on the starboard side now. And again, you'll see that flag breaker here. Now, that again is for the battery charge. So if there's a problem, that'll pop up. And then you simply depress it. If it pops up again, that's an indicator there's an issue you need to put in the service center. In the center aft compartment under the deck, you're going to see a couple different valves and some other components. Okay, this is your fuel tank. Right here is your air conditioning pump. This is what draws the raw water from the from the bay of the river, goes up through, circulates through the air conditioner, and discharges overboard. Okay. In order to operate these valves, open the valve, vertically it's open, and then you close the valve. Same thing here, open the valve, and then you close the valve. This valve is for the head, and this valve is for the air conditioning. Okay, this is your bilge pump here, and then you have another here. This is the fuel tank. There's really nothing you're going to do, have anything to do with this. This is all done and sealed. 
so there's really nothing for you to, to touch or fool around with there. And again, this is the air conditioning pump. Right here, this is your water separating fuel filter for your motor. This filter unscrews just like an oil filter would, and you would replace that. You want to do that every spring, and I think you're going to do it after the first 20 hours, and then after that, the uh, once a season or every 100 hours. So this is the Kenyan grill. Now the Kenyan grill has this little windscreen that comes up, comes over, okay. It has a touch to start, positive and negative, and the more you hit the positive button, the hotter it's going to get. It has the on-off button there, and this is all just by, done by touch. Now to clean this, you lift it out. Lift this one out, and this removes. This is a removable and replaceable drip pan. You use these T handles and you just lift it out. Okay? And there is your bait well. After utilizing the bait well, you want to put the grill back in place. You open up this little fitting, you just unscrew it. That, that comes down. You set the grill off to the side here. You take that cord and you run it right through that port. You lift this in here. There's a waterproof outlet. The wire okay, will be right there. And you lift the cover and plug it in. And now the grill is back on 110 volts. Here, these two switches, starboard side F. One switch is for your cockpit lighting, and the other switch is for your underwater lights. This is your 30 amp shore power receptacle. Push it this way, lift it out, connect your shore power here, and then you have 110 going into the boat. You want to make sure you turn on your shore power switch at your main power, main power distribution panel. This is your salt water wash down. So once that pump is energized, just going to thread that, hook up a hose, open this valve, and then you're energized. Okay. Now, to turn on the pump, you have a switch right here. Switch turns red when the pump's energized. The pump will shut off once it pressurizes because it has a pressure switch. So, the pump will shut off if this valve is off. The pump will shut off because the system is pressurized and ready for use. You can connect your garden hose with your nozzle on the end, open that valve, and the system will remain pressurized and you can use it just like a regular garden hose. When you want to shut the system down, you just turn off the switch. This is the ski pole. I'll show you how to get this thing up in its position. You're going to push down on it a little bit. You're going to pull this back and you're going to hold it. You're going to lift it. Once you get up to here, you can release this. You'll hear this clicks back into place. It's now locked. Now, to return it back to its other position, you hold this back, you push down, continue pushing down until it's flush, slight release, and you'll see it locks back into place again. Okay, so throughout the orientation, we've talked about manuals. And this manual right here, this is your friend. This is going to have a lot of information on in it. You want to take the time. You want to read this. Particularly under the heading of maintenance. Now, we talked about maintenance and maintenance schedules. Here, page 79, it goes through all of your maintenance intervals and what should be checked and when. At 20 hours or every three months, 100 hours or once a year. 300 hours or three years, 500 hours, five years. And then it continues on to the next page. We showed you where your sacrificial animals were earlier in the video. And you'll notice right at the very top of the page, the first item that Yamaha talks about is your external anodes. Inspection and replacement is necessary. The reason they say that is because the environments are different. If you're in the northeast or you're on the west coast or in south of Florida or on the Great Lakes. So you want to check your anodes, your external anodes, 
every few months. Uh, normally, I suggest to my customers, depending on when they go in the water, whether it be April or May, uh, usually about three months down the road, you want to check those anodes to make sure that they're still there. You want to be at least 70% uh, on the anodes. When the boat goes in the water every spring, you want to replace those anodes. Even if those anodes are 75% or better, you still want to replace those anodes every spring. As the boat sits on land over the winter time, corrosion puts a film across those anodes. And then that happens, they're no longer effective. You might have 70% of the material there, but they're no longer effective. So you want to start off every spring before the boat goes in the water with brand new sacrificial anodes on the lower unit and on the transom assembly. Again, maintenance schedule, all right here. You'll notice black and white dots. The black dots are things that the boat owners can do themselves. The white dots are what they would suggest is carried out by Yamaha dealer. And that's all described right here at the button bottom, just, ahead, just on top of the chart. So. The next item I want to touch base on is the Yamaha 6YC information station. We touched on this during the orientation. Um, inside this manual, it takes you through step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your own personal preferences. So again, it makes a good read. This little flyer, this looks like something that would be addressed to current residents that you find in your mailbox, and it gets filed in the round file cabinet every once in a while. But that's not the case, because there's a lot of good information on this. Okay, it goes into the Yamaha products. Okay. And, again, the very fact you have capacities and specifications for every single Yamaha outboard that's offered in the lineup. This particular motor is a 254.2 at the very top of the page. It gives you oil filter numbers. It gives you oil capacities. When you're changing the oil, one thing that you always want to be sure to do is use Yamaha products. When you're doing your oil changes, for the oil, for the filters, always use Yamaha products. This is your new one valve lesson. It gives you a little information as to how to operate the unit. Uh, and this will come in handy years down the road. If you ever find that you need parts, this gives you a part breakdown. If you ever have to replace the filter, or excuse me, if you ever have to replace the, the uh, propeller, the piece of debris that's in there while you're operating, and knocks the blade off, because that does happen from time to time, uh, you've got the part right there. Okay. Now, this manual, 24 coupe. This is a lot of valuable information in here. So it basically goes back over everything that we've talked about in the orientation. So, you open it up. It's going to give you every single component and where that component is located in the boat. And if you recall, we talked about the fuses and their locations. This shows you all the fuse layouts and what each fuse does and what the amperage of each fuse is. So this is a very valuable little booklet that goes into your main control panels and pretty much every other component that's in the boat. So you want to hang on to that, you want to familiarize yourself. And that's 